Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 12.3.1 has been out for a few days. It's the public release if you're not familiar with it. And I've been running it mostly on my iPhone 8 Plus. I also have it on an iPhone 10, an iPhone 7, and my 12.9 iPad Pro. And I run it the most on the iPad Pro since that's what I use mostly for computing when I'm home or not editing videos. And this particular device has been really great. I've had no lockups whatsoever, nothing in settings. And I know some people were having that issue. Thankfully, I have not had that issue with this particular update. Uh, and we'll talk more about the YouTube community poll in a moment where over 5,000 of you responded and I kind of gathered everything that you had issues with, but I wanted to talk about the issues I've had first battery life and things like that. So I've had no app crashes, no resprings, no reboots, and everything seems super fluid and fast. If you're on a plus device, you can rotate to landscape with the exception of the 10s max. For some reason, they don't allow that. 3D touch is nice and fast like you'd expect, and everything is working really well. Scrolling is nice and smooth. You'll see it stutter there for a second, and that is still an issue, but other than maybe an initial small stutter, I've had no issues whatsoever. So that's pretty good, especially since this device is over a year old now, and even on the older devices, it's quite good. So on the iPhone 7, let's take a look at the battery life. So this is a smaller device. This is the jet black iPhone 7. Now, some of you are going to say this is an 8. It is not an 8. It's actually an aluminum back. You can see there's no seam there. It's an aluminum back. It's the iPhone 7. So if you look up the jet black one, this is pretty rare, but it's really nice. Nice. Scratches very easily though on the back. So let's take a look at the battery life. Now this one has a lower battery health of 88%. So that means only 88% of the battery is remaining as far as the capacity. And over the last 10 days, well, here you can see the more recent iOS versions, three hours and 10 minutes of screen on time, three minutes of screen off time. And then, well, the others aren't really used that much. So it's probably got about, well, depending on the day, it could have over 50% left at the end of the day. So it's actually not bad. So maybe six hours of screen on time with this particular beta. Now, when we take a look at my iPhone 8, I've been getting through the day and also my iPad. Like I said, it was the most used device. Now the battery is going to look very different because I pick this up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, charge it. And you'll see, well, here, Two hours and three minutes looks pretty terrible, but easily eight hours using it with YouTube, things like that. So I have no issues with that whatsoever and no lockups or freezes or anything like that. So no issues on the iPad for me. Now, RAM management, seems to be fine on the eight plus. And some people ask me about this. Actually, quite a few of you ask me about it and I don't normally cover it, but Ram management on this is quite good. I can go back about 10 apps without them reloading on their own. So I don't really ever have an issue if they reload. I don't really mind, but I know some of you are curious about that. And so I went back and YouTube is not reloading for me every time on this, like it is with beta two of iOS 12.4. Now, as far as the most important bug fix for me, LTE and Wi-Fi, those things seem much better on this particular update. Now, my signal, the signal strength here, you have to kind of take with a grain of salt because that's just not really a true indication of how much signal strength you have. That's kind of hidden in the OS and Apple doesn't really let you see that anymore like they used to. But my Wi-Fi signal, for example, if I'm in my house, oftentimes I'll go into YouTube, watch an app or watch a video rather, and then the app kind of freezes. And so I'll switch off Wi-Fi, switch it back on. That doesn't work. I'll turn on airplane mode. I haven't had to do that at all with iOS 12.3.1. So it's been much, much better for me. So performance, battery life seems pretty stable and everything else is good. And this one in particular, people are always asking me, how's your battery health? This one is at 99% and it's pretty old at this point. Now, keep in mind, it has not been used mostly for the past half of a year or so since the 10s and 10s max are out. Now let's talk about the YouTube community poll. So quite a few of you responded. So I appreciate that. And let me refresh here. So it says 5.1 K votes. So 5,100 people, 53% of you said it was great. 6% said it was terrible. 9% said okay, but some bugs, 16% said just okay, and 17% of you are on the beta. Now, if I go back, just to give you a quick overview, you'll see 53% of you said great. Now, with beta, beta 2 of iOS 12.4, only 20% of you said great. So keep that in mind. Uh, the public releases generally are much more stable. And 176 of you commented, I've read them all like I've, I do with all of these videos, and... Basically, after putting all of your information together, 
about half of you still see freezing or stuttering and about half of you have great battery life and great performance and half of you don't. It does not seem to matter which particular device you're on. So let's go through a few of these. Now, if you didn't give me the device you're using, I'll just pass it because I don't know what device we're talking about, but iPhone 10 S very smooth. And I'll like every comment I write or I read rather uh, 10 R great, including battery performance. So that's always good. Great on the iPhone SE battery dies quickly. So again, it's fast, but not great battery for you or for some people. Great on the iPhone 10. It's been running flawlessly on my iPhone 7 Plus. Battery life and performance impressive on my iPhone 10s Max. It's really smooth and running well on my iPhone 7 Plus. iPhone 7 feels a little bit warmer than usual when gaming. Uh, that is really based on the type of game, how much processing it's using. If it gets too hot, the phone will actually shut off and say it's too hot. So I would never really worry about that personally. So here's someone else that says full of bugs on iPhone 10 S hate it. So again, some people have weird issues. Some don't YouTube is reloading, confirmed it reloads out. Even if there's only three to four apps running in the background. Again, I haven't experienced that with 12.3.1. Not much different than iOS 12.3 when it comes to the battery. It stutters from time to time, while 12.3 was pretty smooth. iPhone 8 Plus. Running great on iPhone 10. Everything is improved. My battery took a hit. The percent health has dropped, so I don't know if it's good or bad, but I have to charge my iPhone 6S Plus battery very soon, especially with iOS 13 on the way. I'm not getting rid of it. Still have my 10R, but love my 6S Plus. The battery percentage, I don't know if this is a common misconception. It can change when you actually update the OS, but that's only because it's measuring the battery health again. I wouldn't really pay too much attention to that as it can vary greatly. The update will not affect the battery health. It doesn't just change it. It's that's actually a physical measurement. No lags. Battery is good after two cycles, as they call indexing. Indexing is actually the background process of the OS determining where all the files are again. So when you do a search, it can tell you quickly where that file is. But super smooth and best part, no connectivity issues on LTE and Wi-Fi. I'm using the 10 and it's too good update. Apple better late than never. And thanks, Aaron. You've always been great. Help. Uh, glad I could help. And... Again, normally when I do these updates, that's why I say give it a couple days for battery because it will change over those few days. Feels fast and great on my iPhone XS Max. On my iPhone 8 Plus, it fixed my battery drain issues and it's now fast and smooth. iPhone 6 seems feels smoother, snappier. Also Wi-Fi and LTE especially, but my provider has been making significant network upgrades in my area. Connectivity seems more solid. Better, the Wi-Fi and LTE issues have been fixed Battery life is real good on my 10, my iPhone Max or 10s Max. LTE connectivity seems to be improved on my iPhone 7, but occasionally stutters have increased from 12.3. So we're seeing sort of a common theme. Let me read a couple more here. I noticed that my iPad 10.5 and 10, the battery life got significantly better iPhone SE performance is really good, but the battery isn't. I only got two and a half hours of screen on time. For some reason, my iPhone 10 does not show me new updates anymore. I haven't noticed the 12.3.1 release at all. When Apple pushes out an update, it does not automatically update immediately on your phone. They don't push it right away. In fact, if it comes out and you've seen that it comes out, go to general under settings, go to software update and see if you have the update. It should show up here. Now, if you're on a beta, it will not show this because it would have to revert back and go back a, a, an update version or two to get to that. So if you're on 12.3 and you haven't automatically updated already, it hasn't shown you that it hasn't for most people. They don't push it right away. They push it over time on the iPhone 10. It's pretty good also. And for most people, it's going to be OK if it's really bad battery. Check your battery life and see what's going on in the background. There's probably something causing it. So that's it for iOS 12.3. Let me know anything else you may have found in it in the comments below. Of course, iOS 13 beta one will be released in just about a week or so. So seven days from today, we'll see the first beta developers will get it later that month usually. And then the final will be out in September. iOS 12.4 betas will continue as well since the 13 update doesn't come out until September. So be sure to check back for all of the updates on iOS 13 and more. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.